The Daily Ramble podcast. Hello, Hammers fans. David Moyes here, and you're watching Claret and Booze. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Claret and Booze. My name's Nick, uh, and I'm joined by Geo. I think you've all been waiting for this for this show. Um, it's a follow up from the community post and the video that myself and Geo did earlier in the week. Um, which all came about, let's face it, it all came about off of the uh, the Sean Whetstone poll, Geo, that he ran, you know? So we're going to blame Sean. We're going to blame Sean about this. But um, before we get into that, how are you, Geo? Yeah, I'm good. Um, I'd always say looking forward to Sunday would be a slight lie, uh, but there's an element of me looking forward to it, I guess, just the prospect of doing the treble over at Arsenal. Would and sweet. It, it would be nice. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not impossible, but also I think the fact that Antonio's back and Paqueta's not far off being back as well. Yeah, it's just good. So some good news amongst all the sort of negativity at the minute, which is understandable. There is some positive news as well. So yeah, yeah. Your European draw is not far away either. So um, when when is that? I think it's the end of the month, isn't it? So is that after the Brentford game? Because we've got that's on the twenty sixth, isn't it? So we've got three big games coming up. We've got Possibly. Arsenal. I think, I think the draw's the end of the month, and then the two games are in March. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, three big games. I mean, it could all change around. You know, if we do, if we do beat Arsenal, then you know, we know the fan base. It does. It shifts around, doesn't it? You beat Arsenal, do the treble, put in a good performance, go away to uh, to Nottingham Forest, get a win, win at home to Brentford. You know, but then obviously you've got the flip side of it as well. So <laughs> anything's possible. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. But look, um, just to give you a bit of a brief on this show, if you. Um, Oh, someone else can get that. Sorry, doorbell. Give you a bit of a brief on the show. Um, we ran some polls earlier in the week, and it did all start with um, with your man Sean. Um, Sean Whetstone uh, put out a, put out a poll. He's got he's got this is this is this is Sean. You know he's got um, he's got forty forty nine thousand Twitter followers. He's very very West Ham centric. Um, he is you know he's a he's a, he's a self appointed. David Moyes gaslighter as well, and he's a, he's the he's the bald puppet. He calls himself that on the uh, on the podcast. Um, so <laughs> Sean put out a poll um, asking West Ham season ticket holders um, whether they would renew their season tickets if David Moyes got his contract, and um, the result wasn't what he expected. I've spoken to him about it. He thought it was going to be quite far the other way. Fifty seven percent said no, and that's for like I say, an account which is pretty. Pretty pro um pro Moyes, you would say, you know, or pro West Ham or, or not not negative, not the other way anyway. Um so yeah, it's it's kind of set um set pulses racing. But really I think what's really what's really triggered this off, GL, which I think was unnecessary, was after the December run of run of games, most fans were 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 settled. You know, we we kind of we we achieved way more than 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 what we what we expected in those fixtures. We were sitting six in the league. But the thing that always kind of, like I've said before, it sucks the jam out of your donut a little bit, is the minute there's a good run, I suppose it's the same the other way, but the minute there's a good run, these contract talks come out. Now, look, I'm not calling for Moyes to be sacked. I'm not. I just think that any any talk of contracts, it should be until you... My preference would be for him to move on, but I'm not asking for him to be sacked, if that makes sense. Yeah. I just think that it just seems like you win a game, Moyes is going to get a contract, and it just sets... It's like it's like a constant barrage, you know. The same, I suppose, if we if we go on a losing run, Moyes has got to get sacked. Blah 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 blah. It's a never ending cycle, isn't it? Do you not think? Yeah, with all okay. managers, though, not just David Moyes. We've been here with Pellegrini, Bilic, and other fan bases go through it as well. I see Newcastle fans discussing Eddie Howe not that long ago and whatever. So it's it's a never ending cycle at all clubs, but specifically regarding West Ham and Moyes. Yes, I think the timing was. Maybe not unfortunate, but when Moyes mentioned it post Arsenal, we beat Arsenal. Then that's when mm. he mentioned it for the first time, really publicly, that talks are planned. Well, I would assume those talks were planned, even if we got beat by Arsenal. It's just that because yeah. we won those, it looked like Moyes was only saying it because we had won those games. Then obviously the January transfer window comes round, and he mentions it as soon as it's shut because he basically said, "Well, they went on hold because of the January transfer window. We're now going to get back underway." So I think the timing is somewhat unfortunate due to it, the way it lines up with results, if you like. But I guess what you could say is this one: this time he said it, he said it off the back of a disappointing draw against Bournemouth, and we haven't won in 
five games, I think, prior to the, the yeah. Man United one. So it's six now, but that one came after the comments. So yeah, it's um the, the talk has all come from David Moyes, so he's the one that's triggered all the discussions because during January there wasn't the, the is it, transfer is it, windows is it, a distraction, but yeah, does, it, does it feel to you like he's using these media clouds to put a bit of pressure on the situation? No, I think people ask him questions though. I think journalists just ask him and he gives yeah. An answer, and I think he uses. Don't get me wrong. I think he uses the opportunity to yeah. potentially apply pressure. And it put, you've got to think if you were the club, or you were Sullivan, you might you, you must feel a bit of pressure now because my Moise basically said we will sign a new deal. So already you're already on the back foot. And then there will be people like Sean and the journalist emailing him for an update. Going, well, how are you responding to what David Moyes has said? Yeah. And you, A, you have to reply because you use them for when you need to put something out there, you contact these journalists. So it's a bit of give and take. You've got to give them something. But you also know that anything you do say is going to be taken. And, you know, the the recent one at the minute, it's just, it's literally just a line, one sentence, but it's, I, you know, yeah. mounting out of Mohill. So, but, but that's all we've got to go on, one sentence from David Silva. And we will all go on that because that's we're West Ham fans. We're looking for evidence we're looking for stuff to talk about we're looking for something that encourages us either he's staying or he's not staying depending on which side yeah. you sit on so it's, you're it's always looking not for stuff. knowing isn't it it's a not knowing that uh, that is, yeah. that is killing people i think at the moment but can you take it back even further than that from uh, obviously when david moyes first came out after the um, arsenal game and, and and mentioned this you know we'd been on a good run can you not take it back further than that to when sullivan told jim white that David Moyes' contract was unlikely to be renewed at the end of the summer. Um, and that goes back about two months or three months, but then it was quickly rescinded. Um, so they kind of, that story went out, Jim White ran with it. And then two to three days later, you had stories coming out in Claret and Hugh where they was obviously backtracking. Um, do you think that that could have caused a reaction within the club where Moyes has gone, what's, what's, what is this all about? Why have, you, why have you said that? No, because Sullivan's done this all the time we, we lose a yeah. few games and it's suddenly you've got two games to save your job. Sullivan's always been like that. We had it for the whole of last season. Yeah. We got three games. We'd draw one, win one, lose one. Okay, we've got another three games. And before you know it, it's the end of the season. And it was like that. I can't remember the run of games. We were last, last, last season was particularly bad though, wasn't it? Yeah, every, every, every month. Oh, he's got three yeah. games. And we win a game that almost resets the counter. And then you get yeah. to one game away and it resets again. And he always just did enough to reset the counter. And I don't believe it. I think it's Sullivan's way of kicking the can down the road a little bit. And Sullivan knows if he says five games, we're probably going to win one of the five. Yeah. And he doesn't have to answer that question again for another five or six games. Um, so when that came out, I can't remember who got beat by him. It was after the heavy Fulham defeat, wasn't it? I think that came out. Yeah. And then I think the the sort of the unofficial official line was we're watching the next two games and we had a European game and we played Wolves and we won both games and we played really well in both games. Yeah. It was a sort of like, now what? Now what do we do? Yeah. Um, cycle starts again. I know, I know. It does. Um, it is getting a little exhausting, to be quite honest. I must admit. Um, it 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 would be it would be nice if we just knew either way, because then you can you can actually sort of form. The, the thing is, though, Nick, like we 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 both agree that decisions should be made at the end of the season, regardless of what, if you want Morris to go or not. The decision should be made at the end of the season, right? So in theory, there's nothing to know. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, the thing is, ultimately, do you think, do you think that the decision will be made at the end of the um, the season? Do you think that a can will be kicked down the road to the point where? Because I think it will. I mean, we've only got a few months left, and Sullivan's already managed to extend it from January to February. Now it looks like it's probably going to run into March. Um, it's not long. To, I mean, what? Why? Why even bother at this stage? Um, I'm not sure. I'm, 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 it's hard to predict as to when it'll happen, if it happens. My prediction is you'll get a new contract. Yeah. But when he gets it, I'm not. I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised if it's towards the end of the season. Um, it won't take much to convince Sullivan. I think. If, do you know that we were talking about the next few games? If we were to somehow win them all, I think yeah. you'd soon find Moyes get a new contract. While the mood is good and while we're in a good league position, I think the contract comes out. If he's but, if he's going to get one, that's when you do yeah. it. Yeah, because if we go back to, and I will always point to Marko Natovic, 
when January transfer window, he wanted to leave, kicking and screaming, he didn't get his move. And we played, was it Wimbledon? We played in the cup and we got humiliated. And about yeah. an hour after it came out that Anatovic had signed a new contract. Now, the club obviously thought, assumed we were going to beat Wimbledon. And then we can tell people about Anatovic and people would accept yeah, yeah, it yeah. because we've just won. But we got beat. So everybody was angry. And Anatovic thing came out and everybody got angrier. Um, yeah. so, so West Ham always, I think, I find sometimes can be a little bit reactive to sort of the mood of the, the crowd. And if it's good right now, we get the bad news out there because it won't annoy them as much and if it's bad news just keep it quiet until it's good again yeah no no it's um personally for me i don't think they will do anything until the end of the season i i, I don't think they will but i think that they're going to torture us with talk of this contract until the end of the season and i don't know why you know because this could all be stopped in its tracks if sullivan literally came out and said or whoever and said look we do we do support david Moyes, we do but We've had, we've had a bad run of games. There's only a few months to the end of the season. We're going to delay talks until the end of the season. But still support him, but say, like they did the last time, the last time he got his contracts, that didn't happen until the end of the season. I, I think that's why Moyes is pushing for it. Yeah, I know. But 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 the thing is, if he was to do that, then everyone would shut up. Because at the moment, as, as, it, as, it, as it stands, I think no, they we would. Wouldn't. We wouldn't shut up. Nobody no, would. no. About, still... the contract, about the contract, you would. No, you wouldn't. So if Sullivan well, said to you, I promise you we're leaving it till the end of the season, you wouldn't mention it until the end of the season. No, I wouldn't be going on lockarm at the moment. I wouldn't be running polls, no. I'd, I'd let the season run out because because it's because it's futile. It's futile, really. Because at the end of the day, if he if he goes this se- if he if he goes this season and say, for instance, look, I don't want him here, you know that. I, like I said, I don't want not, at this stage, don't want him sacked. Happy for him to run his contract down. I do want to change the direction. But if we get to the end of this season and he gets top eight and we win a cup, then you can't argue against but, him getting a new contract. But what I'm saying is at the minute we're discussing, will he get a new contract? Should he get a new contract? When will he get a new contract if he's going to get one? So if Sullivan says we're leaving it to the end of the season, that removes the when. Yeah. But it, what it doesn't do is remove the discussion of, should he get one? Will he get one? That still remains. So actually, the, the the discussions and everything else still goes on. The only thing that's been yeah, really yeah, yeah. is when will it happen? Even if Sullivan said end of the season, it's it's the debate still goes on. It just made me feel better. It wouldn't change anything. <laughs> right. It wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, change anything. You're probably right. Well, there is a comment that I've got here. I think this is right. right. One, one minute. Um, This one here, right. This is from Guy Ledouche. He says, with the way that they've been able to keep some players signed in secret, I wouldn't be surprised if the deal was already done and they just won't announce it until basically the right time. What are your thoughts on that? Because they've done it with Suchek. They've done it with Antonio. They wait until Suchek's form picked up. We also knew, we also knew it was done, though. Yeah. We just didn't announce it, but we knew it was done. Yeah, so you, you, don't, you don't buy into that one, no? No, I, I don't think so. I, I, listen, I, is there a verbal agreement? Maybe. Do you know when the talks are happening? Talks is a very vague thing. So what well, they I, think, do, I think there must be a verbal agreement for David Moyes to be so confident. Yeah, there must be. Well, but this is what I'm saying. Talks, right? So Moyes says talks will resume. Well, actually, the club, they can talk all they want. It doesn't mean he's going to get a contract off. Yeah. They might just be discussing what the plan is, what the plan is for the summer, what... Moyes wants on the contract, what Sullivan wants on the contract. Talks can happen and talks can take a very long time. I mean, they could start talks now. They might only be resolved till the end of the summer anyway because of everything that they need to discuss. So I believe talks have taken place of some form. Moyes said it's quite far down the line or something, his phrase was. Um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised some things have been verbally agreed on, perhaps not all of it, but I do think there'll be elements of it, whether it be maybe the contract length. I'd imagine that's quite a simple thing for them to agree on. I think, that's, I think mm. a two-year contract seems pretty, if he was to get a new one, I think that seems pretty realistic on both sides. When I mean, taking yep. into Moyes' age, his aspirations, and where the club are heading, I think a two-year contract feels reasonable in the middle. Um, so I, I think I agree with half of that. I think half of it's maybe agreed, but I don't think it's all well, done. The thing is, the thing is with a two-year deal, you run a season and then you're in this situation again. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that, Nick. But I'm just trying to guess if they were to give him a new contract, how long would it be? It wouldn't be one, it wouldn't be four, so it's two or three, isn't it? Because of... we all argued that case, you know. I think you did yourself. You said it's really difficult for a for a for a manager to build when he's only got one year left of his contract, so you don't know what the future's oh, gonna be. 
think we, this is, we... This, is, this is why Moyes is possibly okay with spunking a load of money on Calvin Phillips. Now, I like that transfer, but why should he care if Phillips is yeah got an option to buy or not? He's not at the minute. He shouldn't be bothered. He's only cared about the next few months, and that is it. So it's, it's a horrible situation. The only thing I will add though is because of Moyes' age, a two-year contract might see Moyes think like this is my last contract in football. We don't know. Moyes might have an exit plan from football altogether. And that might... He doesn't, doesn't need the money. It's just whether or not he's got the appetite to do it anymore, you know? Um, that's the uh, that's the thing. I, he, he could probably, with ease, with his bank balance, I could I could imagine he could probably chip in and buy some shares in West Ham. I'm sure, I'm sure he could do a little bit with his money, yeah. Yeah, he could, he could. Um, but with, um, sort of going back to these polls, so, yeah, look, effectively, following on from, from David Moyes' bombshell and uh, Sean Whetstone running that poll... And the two and two and fourth, the back and forth on on social media, um, we've decided to give people um, a chance to vote. Now, look, we know that this is only a small sample of fans, but between us, you know, uh, myself and Gio, I'm, I've only got ten. Hammers chat are far bigger. They've got thirty six. Is it now? Thirty six thousand um, subscribers now. So forty five. But I suppose some will cross over. So let's let's yeah. So some will cross over. But it's still it's a big portion of fans that had the ability to vote. Um, now. The, the polls were, if I, if I start running through them, so this is not that one. We've looked at that one. This is obviously our one, Claret and Booze. Do you want Moyes to have his contract renewed? So overwhelmingly, like I said, only only 1.9, uh, there's 2,000 votes, 93% said no. Um, Hamish Chats, it's the same thing. Do you want his contract renewed? 84% said no, 2.4K. Um, the next one, uh, we worded our question slightly differently. So my one was, if Moyes gets his contracts, would you still go to games? This is following on from what Sean put out there. Um, and 82% said no on our poll. And on yours, 68% said no. Were you were you surprised at all by the results of the polls? Were you surprised that they were weighted so heavily towards Moyes? Because Hammers chat... I'll, I'll be open and honest, you know, um, I, 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 me, Gary, John, uh, Mickey, we all want Moyes gone now. So I suppose if you want to label the channel Moyes out, you can, because we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. We've kind of, uh, we've, we've, we've nailed our colours to the mast. That, that is, that is what we want. Um, so I, ex I, I did expect ours to be a little bit heavier, but yours, yours is a bit more of a neutral channel um, in the sense that you kind of, um, you're a bit more open with your, with your opinions and, and your engagement, did you expect it to be a little bit different to that? I think I worded the first poll incorrectly. I think that one was on me personally. Um, if yeah. you pop it back up, my first one, if, you, if you've got that one there. What, this one? No, that's your one. Hang on, what? what the... Um, the one after that one, the one after that. This, yes, one. this one. So I worded it right now, okay? So that was like today, what would you do? Because I have this sort of, the thing I keep banging on about, not my subscribers will be sick but of me saying that, this. That is kind of the poll, though, isn't it? The right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, because the reason I use that terminology is because I always encourage people to have the ability to change your mind. Obviously, when you get new data, reevaluate, and it's okay to change yeah. your mind. It's fine to change your mind. So I said, right now, what would you do? And I think what I did, and I realized this because people commented with expanding on their selection, and they basically said, well, I would just decide in the summer so i guess what i did was ring fence them into picking no because no yeah. would cover decide in the summer so i maybe should have reworded that one so that's on me so no i'm not surprised by the results of that poll because of the way i worded the question the second one i don't believe it which is would you still go to games i, I sh again we both worded it differently and um that's my fault because i didn't read your one correctly mm -hmm. but it was off the back of sean's tweet about like renewing contracts and stuff and that when we did a live show for the my new game there's people in the live chat talking about renewing contracts if moy mm -hmm. stays your season ticket sorry and um that's why i did it that way but i don't believe that poll because we always I, get really I, good I think, renewal rates i think, Nick. I think I think one once renewals came round, um, um, people will toy with the idea. I mean, they'll toy with the idea. I, I don't want to renew my season ticket, but it's something you've done for your entire life. Yeah, um, I think and it, and it, but but I do believe I do believe that it will be different this time. If if say for instance, let me give you the scenario: if they renewed Moise's contract now, we dropped out of Europe. Um, you know, yeah, by the quarterfinal stage, and then we ended up finished tenth or twelfth. Um, 
I think you would see a massive drop off in in season tickets. I, I really, really do. What, I mean, what we, do you think is a massive drop off in terms of a percentage? Twenty to thirty percent. I mean, we're we're seeing we're seeing sixty or seventy on the polls. I think that that would probably turn into twenty or thirty percent. I, I um, think. I, I think if Moyes was to stay in that scenario happens, I think we'd have over eighty five percent renewal rate. I do. Yeah. But, but I, I think while I think it's, the renewal it's rate, going, it's people going to games as well. That, How many people do you know? Is. How many people do you know that have got season tickets that just don't go? Me. But loads do. We're, 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 we 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 because we do those shows. You know where we invite people to to send yeah. their WhatsApp notes in. And mate, and some of them are heart wrenching. You know, you, you you're getting them from uh, from from these guys that are taking their, their their kids over there, lifelong season ticket holders themselves. But slowly, slowly, they're getting to the stage where they just can't face going over there because they know what they're going to see. You um on the introduction to this poll, the video that you did, you spoke a bit about. Bournemouth, you know, um, about how you didn't go to that game, did you? And you're glad that you didn't. No, I, I feel guilty not going. We like we do this as yeah. a job, right? Our, our YouTube yeah. channel and, and other things around, around Hammers Chat is, is our job. So there's obviously an obligation to attend games. So I feel guilty about not going to enough matches. But the truth is, I don't find them good value. Like I went to Sheffield yeah. United, it was because of train strikes, but it cost me over 500 quid to go to that game because I had to get two hotels in the end because there was no trains yeah. on the day. But afterwards, we won, and I enjoyed the day and enjoyed the game enough. But was it good value for six, five, six hundred pounds? Not really. You know, that is my season ticket. My season yeah. ticket's between just under six hundred quid. My season ticket is one game is the equivalent of renewing for an entire season. I was debating going to Bournemouth, and Gonzo said he was going, and we don't both go because someone has to do the video. So I was like, right, yeah. that's fine. I won't go. Gonzo will go. I'll get the next one. And then after the game finished, Nick, honestly, I was like. Thank fuck thank, I didn't go. God. Like, thank, thank God. God I didn't. Because I was looking at the trains going down on the Thursday, back on the Friday, staying overnight on the Thursday. And it was like, probably going to cost me between two, three hundred quid to go to the game. Bear in mind, I've already got my match ticket. I've got a season yeah. ticket. That's done. But it's just the expenses of the day, a few drinks with my friends and stuff. And I did just afterwards, I thought, do you know what? I can watch the game. And I know this is really plasticky, but it's my honest thoughts. I could watch the game. Do my video, but even if I hadn't, I could just switch the telly off and go to bed, right? <laughs> so I did the videos and went to bed. And while I was tucked up in bed, there was poor buggers traveling back up north in that. And fair play to them because they did that. But when I did that video, I was expecting a lot of like abuse. Like I thought people were going to be like, oh, you need to get to game, blah, blah. And I still will attend games. I'm not saying I'm not going back. I will still go to games. Yeah. But because of, my personal situation. I'm getting married later this year, Nick. So congratulations. Money, money. I now have to almost justify what I do with my money to some extent. Yeah. To me, not to anyone else. To me, right? But going to a West Ham game is the DJ at my yeah. wedding, right? Um. So it's it comes down to value. It, 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 it makes it, and, value, and, and, and that's the thing. It makes it. It makes it. It shouldn't. It shouldn't feel like that. It shouldn't. You know. Um, because we go, I think a lot of people that go now, a lot of people that do, I think they're going out of a sense of duty, which is right. I'm not knocking that, you know, that's, that's you know, we've, we've had hard times over the years and, and it's always been the same thing, but it is going kind of out of a sense of duty. Now you almost know what you're going to get. Um, and I've heard the same thing about people that didn't attend the Bournemouth game and send it saying, I'm so glad I just didn't bother going, you know, and people as well. It was Sam Oaks from, um, uh, from, from our channel. He, He's a lifelong season ticket holder, and he said he for the first time in his life, he said, I always dig out people that leave early. He said, I do. He said, I'm, I'm really vocal about it. I, d I don't like people leaving games early. He said he, he he left, was it five minutes or ten minutes early this time? One all, sitting in six. The game should be in the balance. You've still got a, you know, a big chunk of injury time, but you could just see, he could just see watching that game, nothing was going to happen. Nothing was going to happen. And that isn't right, Gio, is it? No, I mean, what I will say, and this is my own thing, but I don't like the London Stadium. I've never liked the London no, it's, Stadium. It's awful. it's awful. So the match day experience, I've always... I enjoy a part of it because of the people I attend the games with. I go see my friends. Yeah. Refuge, I enjoy that aspect of it. But I could go see them on an own match day. I could speak to them on the phone if I want to. I can still enjoy the interaction with them. I don't need to attend. But anyway, that I enjoy the social part of it. But the match the experience of queuing up to not even get patted down, to go into the stadium, to watch the game, come out, stop go signs. I don't enjoy the stadium. Regardless of Moises football, I don't enjoy the London stadium experience. No. So, But then when you put on top that fact that I don't really enjoy what's in the stadium, 
it becomes difficult. Like I like music a lot, Nick, and I went to a concert. I like small band music, guitar music, 14 quid, two bands are really like 14 quid from a ticket, right? 14 quid or 500 pound go watch West Ham at the London Stadium. It's difficult to garner much enthusiasm. But like I said, I will go. I'll I'll maybe go to three, four more games this season. I applied for tickets for Man United and Everton in the ballot, didn't get them, that's fine. But what I used to do previously, I would have happily have taken someone else's away tickets and went. Yeah, and they get the loyalty point and stuff, and I pay for them. So I, I used to do that. I basically gave myself a rule this season that I'll only go if I get it in the ballot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've tried to. <laughs> I've almost like crossing, putting my crossing, own bad ears now, but crossing, crossing your fingers, hoping you don't get picked. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but no, yeah. But with the stadium, I mean, look, it doesn't help. It doesn't at all. I mean, you know, you know yourself with me. I've I've never ever warmed to that stadium. Yeah. And one of the reasons that I did eventually let my season ticket go, so I made the jump from Upson Park. Um, I did three years or four years uh, in the stadium. I tried, I tried, um, but the football um, and, and and the actual match day experience for me was really hard. I do still go over there, you know. I do, I do probably fifteen to twenty games a year, home and away, typically. But I pick and I choose, which is kind of how I how I how I like it um, now. I think if I if I had to if I if I had the commitment now of a season ticket where I had to go to having every every game, I think it would literally um it would drive me mad. I think now it's almost like with me son, leave it a couple of weeks, we get a we get a ticket, it's a day out, we go and enjoy the day out, even though the football ain't great. So but look, we know about the pledges when they when they lied to us, when they conned us, when they moved us into this stadium, they said we was going to a world class stadium. We can all agree it might be a world class stadium, but it isn't a world class football stadium, nor is it ever gonna be. But one of the one of the other pledges was this here. Make it enjoyable to come and watch. We want to bring the fun back. It's a serious business, but we know you work hard all week and want to kick back at the weekend and, and enjoy yourselves. We want you to be excited on a match day and not just about the style of football. We're looking at ways to improve our pre-match and half-time entertainment and we'll welcome suggestions. Well, they've delivered fireworks. Um, they've, de- they've delivered sort of pre-match fireworks on evening games, but have they have they hit that target, Gio? Do you think? No. I don't know why, Nick. It said at the bottom there, uh, we'll welcome suggestions so you can get in touch with them. <laughs> yeah, well, we're hoping that this video will will give them a few suggestions. But should we should we chip into these comments anyway? Yeah, go on then. Right, okay. So we'll start, I'll tell you what, we'll start with yours. We'll start with yours. So here we go. Do you want to read these out? Yeah, New Forest says, I have been supporting the Iron since the early 1970s and can only remember exciting football with a few years of boredom. He, that must be the curbishly season. Anyway, he says, yep. at the moment, it's boring, I'm afraid, with occasional excitement thrown in. I appreciate what David Moyes has done in building a decent foundation, but he is not the manager to take us to the next level. Time for a change, please. I completely agree. Completely agree. All right, next one. Um, Spin says, the best possible outcome for every fan would be to Moyes to stay and for him to change his game style. But he's never going to change. I don't want to see him sign a new deal as manager, but we'd like to see him stay at the club to continue working on our stability. I mean, that's a good point. Um, going to, uh, I suppose, where I am now. Um, if I believed, if I thought that David Moyes could start delivering a better style of football and actually not just do it when he's in trouble to appease people, you know, when he's back against the wall, but actually sort of make the most out of the players that he's got. He's got he's got the players to do it, Gio. We know that. He's got a collection of very talented players. If he was to change up completely throughout the rest of this season, he would, he could and would win a lot of people over. But do you think he will? No. No. Um, I think he believes his method will yield results. And I would argue that... Up until a week ago, we're sixth in the Premier League. I would argue it's working this season. We're sixth and seventh in the league. We're seventh in the league. It's working. Yeah. If we were to finish seventh at the end of the season, I'd be happy with that. Uh, it's The results are really good under David Moyes in terms of the end result, if you like. Maybe not the methods or the journey or how you get yeah. there or do you deserve it. That's all subjective in opinions. But in terms of the cold, hard points tally on the league table the results are good so i completely agree with that comment that's why i selected it when i read it i thought do you know what i think he's bang on i think yeah it always was to change his style and be more entertaining everybody yeah. he would win people, he would win people over most people would be happy because and this would. is where the pundits fuck up and piss me off because they talk about as if we're annoyed about being six or seven in the league i've seen very little grievances regarding the results it's no 
the football that people have an issue with. And if you were to combine a manager that plays really good football and the results David Moyes brings, I think a lot of people would be happy. Not everyone, you'll never please yeah. everyone. But I think most oh. people say, do you know what, this is really good. We're challenging for European football and we're enjoying what we're watching. Absolutely. So that's my respect to that comment. I think it's bang on. It is bang on. And 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 the thing is, I think with you spoke about the journey because a lot of people say, look, look, you can't argue with the results. You physically can't. But the fact of the matter is, you know, even at our best under David Moyes, we finished sixth. Now, look, it gets you European football. But it's sixth in the league. I mean, it's it, on, on, we sort of took the piss out of Arsenal and Spurs for years for sort of crowing every time, you know, just, just getting top four. We're never going to win the league. The actual competition that we, that we spend all year playing in 38 games, we came sixth and that was kind of, um, and I know it was the highest, but what I'm trying to say is it isn't that great. And that is why I think it's so important. I think the journey is important, Gio. I think the journey is also is almost more important. If you're not going to win the league, which you're not, we're never going to win the league. Over that 38 game period throughout a season, I think it's more important to focus on the journey as opposed to the destination boring your way to get just creep over the line so you can get into European football. That for me, I can't buy into it. I'm not saying I don't like the European football. I do. It's great, but I think that success success if you have it should come as a byproduct of entertainment and your values as opposed to at the expense of. It should never come at the expense of. I, don't I, half, agree with, I half agree with that, Nick. I think I, I have two different sort of like... Yeah. When we go into games, if it's a cup game, I don't <laughs> care about how we play in a cup game mm. because all that matters is you're in the next round. That's that's all that matters. Maybe you, in, the, in the cups, I agree. Yeah, yeah. in the cups, yeah. it's all about the results. In the league, like yeah. I said, 38 games, there's room for errors, there's room for losing a game and, and, and mm. being better on the eye. But when you say the six isn't that great, I disagree with that, actually. I think it is really good for this football club. I think the six is fantastic. And, and that's removing the fact that we were in a relegation battle the season prior. Yeah. To finish six was, and then seven, and then to follow up with seven to the European campaign, I think was fantastic as I, well. I know, I know, I know it is an achievement. I know it's the toughest league in the world. And to get six and to get that Europe, I'm not knocking it. And I know it's something that we don't do very often. But what and in fact, when we when we did get six, I don't think we did it with boring football either. I don't think we no, did. We, it. Were really good that season. We, we we were good in that season because I don't think you can bore your way to success anymore. I think the Premier League's changed. You know, it it, it has. Uh, so so I think the best way is to be on the front foot uh, personally, especially if you've got the players to be able to deliver it. But I think if 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 the aim is if the new strategy is is to um, completely and utterly moise ball your way to try and get to sixth place bore your way to sixth place to climb a few extra spaces in the league. I, I, I don't really, I don't really accept that to be honest. I mean, yeah, that, that's six, but I, I, I will accept that season six with the way that we was playing was an, was, was, was an achievement. It really was. Yeah. I think it was fantastic. Definitely. If we could replicate yeah. that season, because yeah, yeah. What my next question was going to be was um, if the new manager came in and played better football, but got six, I think we'd all say, wow, this is fantastic. This is what we want. Yeah. So I think six, 100%. Is an incredible achievement. I get what you're saying now, though, which is how you get there isn't how you is, get, is, how is, you is, is, is it, sort of for you lessons achievement. I get that now. When you first said, I thought you were meaning just finishing six wasn't that good. No, I'm like, oh, no. on the minute. Six is we've got no right to be higher up, or when you whatever you oh. want to look at money spent, net spend, wages, we're not in the top six for any of those things. So on, on, but on the on on the on the whole of it, right? If you finish with it's it's a competition, it's a league. There's no there's no prizes for um uh, for for runner up, not really, you know. Um, so I think any anywhere between second and second and seventeenth in the league, you know, if you haven't won the league and you haven't got relegated, you're in the league typically. That's kind of the way it is. I know that the way that it works in the Premier League is you get European competitions, but I just think I'm not saying I want seventeenth and playing good football because that's another thing that people get wrong. Yeah. They, yeah. Oh, you want to play good football and lose? No, no. The, it's, the two are not mutually yeah, exclusive. I I, 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 agree. I completely agree with that. I've seen that. I've seen that plenty of times. It frustrates me, which is what you want to play better football and get relegated. Yeah, you know, no. I want to play better football and compete for European football. Can I not have both? Yeah. Is it, why is it one or the other? Why does it have to be good football or winning football? Can we not have both? Well, if, if you're playing a style of football that is throwing you, you under the bus, like Leeds did, if you're playing a style of football and you don't have the personnel to deliver it, then you're an idiot to a degree. You're a yeah. bit of an idiot because, because you're literally just, just walking into... Um, you're walking like a lot of lambs to the slaughter. So I can understand. I can understand teams like Sheffield United playing a low block. I get it. Yeah, I, yeah. I understand it. It's, it swings and roundabouts as well, though, because those that 
talk you down, which is almost tell you you're not allowed good football and winning football. It doesn't exist at West Ham. Well, what about the teams that are playing their version of Moyes ball, but also still getting relegated? So what does that mean? If they start playing better football, they automatically stay up. What, yeah. what is it? Do, 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 do results flip for everybody? They change style, or is it just West Ham that it automatically gets go, yeah. goes by the way? It's, it, it's just, I've never understood it. I found it a very strange argument. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Right, La- next few comments. Right, so we got. Yeah, this is your one, mate. Uh, Brendo says the new Moises contract will place a ceiling on any future success. His brand of football will not bring consistent results against good teams and will act as a deterrent to attracting and retaining good players in the future. If West Ham are happy to stay a mid to lower team t- table team, then Moyes is OK. But we should aim higher than that, just as Villa and Brighton have. Thoughts on that? Um, I disagree with a lot of it, but that's, I've, not, I've not just picked comments I agree with. I pick yeah. comments I think make good points and a lot of people believe that we will struggle to retain and attract good players if we have David Moyes. I disagree with that one because I think with Moyes we've signed Paqueta and Caduce and mm. retained Javid Bowen so I struggle to believe that. I think the wages attract players. I don't think it's a manager. I, I, think, think, maybe, the, I think the Premier League attracts players. Yeah, I, I think the, the money that, that attracts players. Um, mm. uh, there will, would be an element of the manager being an influence but in this day and age, I think when you're joining a club you have to assume the manager it's probably not going to be there in a couple of years. No. The sh- lifespan of a manager these days is really short. But anyway, that, but I picked out because it, I think it reflects a lot of people's beliefs and I think he worded it really well. So that's why I, yeah, I absolutely. Like what Brando said. Yeah, I, 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 do think, I, I do think that we should be looking at, them, at, at the likes of Brighton and uh, Newcastle and, and, and Villa. You know, I don't, I don't understand how, how Sullivan isn't because I think we've got an opportunity here, Gio. I think... We've got a real good collection of, of players. We've got a core of players. A nice small, a nice and small squad, but we've got a, we've got a core of, of of excellent players. You know the quality level's high. I just think it's an opportunity, you know, and I just feel like I just don't want it to pass us by. I don't want. To, I'm, not, I'm not ganging up on uh, Brendo because he's not here to defend himself. But what you've just said is we've got a, a group of excellent players. Majority were brought in under David Moyes, though. So yeah, do you know about, about us attracting top players. Well, you've just said there, I agree with, we do have a good squad. Yeah. The majority arrived under the stewardship of David Moyes. That that would suggest that Moyes can be the manager when we bring in top talents. Yeah, yeah. No, the, yeah. Well, look, look, he's, he's proven that. That can't really be debated, to be honest, with, with like you've well, just you said. Brendan, Brendo, can I, Brendo believes that. That's fine. I'm not saying he's yeah. wrong. I'm just saying I disagree. I think we can. I, I, think, I do think there are certain types of player that would look at the way that we play. And uh, for instance, strikers. I think it would be very, very difficult for yeah. David Moore to convince a stri- well, top striker to come and play for him. We'll put you it know? this way: if I was, if I was George Earthy, I know we're looking at now a young player. I, I wouldn't be committing my future to West Ham because I think I'm not that. Ma- ma- that manager will never use a player like me. I really like James McAtee, who's on loan at Sheffield United. We'd love him next season. But I probably wouldn't come here if that was him. He does look good. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Right, next one, Gio. Digital said, I'd wait until the end of the season. I don't think it's currently a yes or no question for a lot of fans. Disclaimer, if he was to win the Europa, I'll get top six, for example. Or if Tim goes to Liverpool, I'm not sure I want Sullivan to choose a new manager when we are stable. If Moyes flops both competition and Tim stays, I'd like to give him a shot at getting the replacement. I agree with that. I, I think do. it completely sums up the predicament West Ham are in. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it does, it does. Although I don't believe that Tim is going to be leaving. Um, I don't now. Uh, to be quite honest, you can never, you can never tell. Don't know, but um, I don't think so. Just recruit, recruited his brother, um, the other analyst. You know, he's given his commitment to those people. Um, so I, I, look, things happen in a football club. David Sullivan is a is a a strange character. I can't imagine he's the easiest person to work with. So you don't know what what's going to materialise, but. Um, I think leaving it until the end of the season at this stage is the best thing. It is because, like I said, even if you don't enjoy the football, which I certainly don't, I hate it, um, you can't knock the results and, and and where it's got us so far. He's definitely earned the right to see this season out, 100%. He has, in, in my opinion. So I think it's only fair to run it until the end of the season. And then if they have a decision to make, if they haven't made it already, then that's when you do it, I think, you know. Personally, I completely agree with what you've just said there. Yeah. Um, right. So let's go to a few others. Oh, no, no, there is another one. There we go. 
Uh, you were trying to hide the Moyes one. You were trying to hide the Moyes in one there, Nick. Just um, one. <laughs> Stab says, I bat Moyes 100%. Most successful manager in my era, sitting seventh with a European trophy under our belt after last year. So, yes, I 100% back him. Yep. And there are people that, that, that like Moyes, really, really like him, don't they? They seem to. Well, Sav, <laughs> what Sav's done, again... I feel bad saying this because Sav was not here like Bender wasn't, but what Sav has done there is stick to the facts. Mm. We're seven. We've got a European trophy. It's it's hard to argue against. Yes, both of those are correct. So if that's why he wants him to stay, which I can only assume it's a results-based desire, and I understand that because we've seen chaos at West Ham. Yeah. And while transfer deadline day was a bit of a almost a nod back to the history of West Ham under David Sullivan, where we forgot to type in Ben Ram and Fernandes' details into the transfer system. We've been dealing with the wrong transfer, uh, the wrong agent for Abraham Osman. There was almost a little bit of a David Sullivan window about it. But for a few seasons now, it's actually been quite quiet in the grand scheme of things at West Ham, um, where previously we've had a lot of disruption. And if someone like Sav wants stability and no risks, then I think that's what Moyes brings. I think Moyes brings no risks. Yeah. Um, I I disagree. We had a 35-game relegation battle last season with Paqueta and Rice in the team. Um, Rice is gone. Paqueta's probably going to be gone next season. Um... I do think that we've seen that without Paqueta in this team, David Moyes needs a talisman, somebody that can carry the team. Someone, I'm, I'm going to say it, someone who's coattails, coattails that he can ride to a yeah. degree to get him goals. I think he, he needs that in a team. Paqueta is definitely our only creative force, which is crazy when you consider that he spent half a billion pounds to get us there. Um, so, no, I don't think it's safe with David Moyes. I don't think there's any guarantees. I was, I was just guessing what Saab thinks. Yeah. Do you think it's safe? Yeah, I don't think we'll get relegated. I think, while I agree, I think Paquetta will go in. I agree we're shite without him. However, mm. there's £85 million to replace him. And I'm hoping Steiden has one or two players to bring in that can... Listen, if we're all aware that the creativity is low yeah. without Lucas Paquetta, Tim Steiden will be aware creativity is low without Lucas Paquetta. But not only that... Maximilian Hans, the, the other fella that you were referencing there who's come yep. to the club, is a data expert. He's a self, he's titled as the numbers guy, the data expert. Yeah. And while I'd imagine majority of those data crunching assignments will be towards recruiting new players, I wouldn't be surprised if there's an element of let's look at the current squad as well because yep. – I struggle to believe that Steiden and Hans and anyone else that's really into data and really believes in numbers behind football, whether you do or not, doesn't really matter here. They do. Yeah. I struggle to believe that they would just not pay attention to what the current team is. But that's that's, that's, that's how you improve in squad positions. You have to look at what you've got in terms of data and then look at what will how someone will improve you. So they'll be looking and noticing that Paqueta is the man that makes us tick. And if he goes in the summer, we have a massive problem. And it's their job to then go and identify someone who can replace Paqueta. Either we go a different way, like Declan Rice. We decided yep. we can't replace Rice like for like, fine. Or you you replace him like for like. You go get the next Lucas Paqueta. That's yeah. their job. That's their assignment. So while Paqueta leaving would be a blow, yes, this is where you look at Stade in hands and say, well, what you got? And this is where Sullivan needs to get, grow a pair of bollocks and back them because that player might have been in Abraham Osman. It's, it's possible that Steiner said, this is the guy to replace Paqueta. We'll get him in now. So when Paqueta goes, it's fine. We've got the guy for yeah. the left wing and we, we now need a number 10 or whatever. Um, so, how, how, do you, how do you think the, do, the, the data profile for Thomas Suchek would look? <laughs> <laughs> I, I reckon Maximilian Hans turned up, looked at the numbers and said to Tim Steiner, this centre-back's bloody good, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Steiner had to explain he's actually a centre midfielder. Number Even ten numbers suggest yeah. that he's maybe a centre back. He's actually a centre midfielder. Uh, right, so look, I'm going to move on to uh, the comments from the Claret and Booze community now. So what I what I have done because there was there's so many. Um, so I have cherry picked a couple that we're going to put up on screen and discuss. The rest of them, in all their glory, 
are going to be playing and scrolling at the end of the video in um, an outro video um, that you can you can all you can all watch. Um, yeah, strength of feeling is is quite um, is uh, it's quite high, I would say. Um, so this is a good comment. It's a long comment, so I haven't got as many as you, Geo. But we're going to run through this because it, this is kind of. Um, it's, it's, it's as if I wrote it myself when I was reading it. I completely resonated with it's it. It's a burner account. Yeah, it is, yeah. Johnny, Johnny T, 271. Right, he says, I've always been West Ham and will be till I die. West Ham is a massive part of my life and I'm thankful for what Moyes has done. But if we give him a new deal, I'll be absolutely devastated. Watching West Ham has become an absolute chore for me, my brother and my dad. Even when we win, the games are nearly always a stressful watch, which end with a feeling of relief rather than joy. It's with a heavy heart, that I say I feel like one of my main joys in life has been taken from me. That's quite common, to be quite honest. I'm getting that a lot, and I feel the same. When we left Upton Park, we did so under the promises of getting a world-class team in a world-class stadium. The board have failed massively on that front. Therefore, in my view, it's criminal for them to refuse to listen to the fans in regards to what we are seeing on the pitch. Recent results have been greeted with huge boos around the stadium, not because of the results, but because of the awful negative approach of David Moyes. Again, I agree with that. Uh, the most painful part of it all is that the board seemed to dangle us a carrot in the form of Tim Steinson. Formerly, finally, I thought we were moving towards the levels that we were promised when we left our home. And now I check the news each day, fearing headlines that Steinson has left for Liverpool. I can already hear the critics and the media asking how how we could stop how we couldn't stop Steinson leaving for Liverpool. But the facts are that they've already approached two other candidates who have rejected them because the candidates are happy to be at the clubs that they are. Uh, and the clubs are not as big, but they actually give them the control that they need to implement their vision. It goes on to say, to lose Steyton because we're limiting his control will be unforgivable. And if that happens, I'll be urging fellow fans to get right back on the anti-board protests that we used to see in full force. I've never been, I've, I've never liked the board, but appointing Steyson was the first thing that actually gave me hope that we could grow as a club under them. If we lose Steyson because of Sullivan, my opinion of the board will be at an all-time low. I'm happy where we are in terms of results and what we've done under Moyes. Absolutely. But if you'd asked me, would I accept leaving Upton Park if it meant winning a trophy, but we would have to sacrifice any form of entertainment on the pitch to do so, it would have been a resounding no from me. Everything we've done under Moyes could have been achieved while staying in our beloved bowling. Completely agree. If we were going to be 2024's version of Stoke City, there was no need to leave Upton Park. You took our home. Now the, now, the least that you can do is deliver on half the promise that you made when uh, conning us into agreeing to it. That stadium will never be world-class, but you have a chance to let Tim Steyson turn us into a team worthy of leaving Upton Park for. Let him do the job you brought him, brought him in to do and stop being dictated to by the media. David Moyes has done a good job, but he's hit his ceiling. And I, for one, I'm not calling for him to be sacked, but if the board offer him his new deal, I certainly will be calling for their dismissal. What do you think about that, Gia? Very, very fair. By myself nodding um, um, mm. to a lot of it as well, actually. I think it's hard to disagree with anything, truth be told, that he, he's written there. And I, I do like the fact that a lot of the finger is pointed at Sullivan. David Sullivan. And reading that, the tone is... There's no blame at David Moyes here. David Moyes is doing what David Moyes does, and it's worked. Yeah. He just doesn't like it anymore. And... If Moyes signs a new contract, that's not David Moyes' fault. That's David Sullivan's fault. So I, I do think I do think that poster Johnny is looking in the right direction here, which is at David Sullivan saying, "Well, yeah. this is up to you. This is your call now. You brought in Tim Stoudin. Now what you're going to do?" And I, I have a feeling Johnny is expecting Moyes to get a new contract. Reading between the lines of his post there. I think I think a lot of people are concerned about it. They are. Um, uh, we've got we've got every right to be. I mean, look, Moyes is incredibly certain. He's come out and spoken about it himself. So, um, and it would be a shame. But I, I think he's right in terms of the anti board protests returning. I think David Moyes. One of one of the reasons that Sullivan likes David Moyes is because he's directed a lot of the fan attention away from himself onto Moyes. I think he does like that. He's like a fire blanket. Um, that's a plus point. For Sullivan, you know, he'll remember um, the protests and everything else. Uh, I do think that if they give him a contract extension and it doesn't go well, say for instance, say they extend his contract now, the season falls off. I don't think there's any point at that stage. He's here for two years. There's no point 
go into Moyes. There's no point going on about Moyes. It has to be focused on Sullivan at that point because he's the man that's made the decision. We It's very clear that he can't really deliver the level of football that we need. We can go back and we can argue what he did in that first season, you know, when when we when we when we got six. I would argue that was only a third of a David Moyes team. This is now one hundred percent a David Moyes team. He's got his fingerprints all over it. So every season that he's been here, he's slowly moulding it into a um, you know, it's it's becoming more and more his way. Um and I think that's why the football's getting uglier. But yeah, I do think that I think that if they give him his contracts Attention will shift to Sullivan. Certainly, from my from my point of view, there's no point. There's no point even talking about it even more uh, it, anymore. It's, it's it's Sullivan's call, and Sullivan also has everything available to him. Whatever Sullivan mm. wants in order to make, come to decision, it's easy now. Yeah. Um, to whether well, gauge fan reaction, whatever, it's very easy. That's why sometimes when you see these polls come out from Sean, and sometimes Sean's doing it for his own interest. But I do question, second guess it. Is, is, is he asked to do this by David Sullivan? Is David Sullivan wanting to gauge reaction? And no, no, no. Sullivan doing it? Yeah. I do. I do second guess stuff though. Um, <laughs> you know, if you like, with the greatest respect, if you do a poll, I know you're doing it because you're interested. But with Sean or Kyle and Hugh do one, I do think is just at the request of. Well, David Sullivan. What they can't do, if, they, if they're about to make a big decision like giving David Moyes a contract and they do want to gauge fan opinion, they can't go out and attach themselves to a poll such as that. They can't, it can't be a West Ham poll. Yeah. right? They can't do that because they're apparently backing the manager. So that's where these third-party people like Sean, like you, who have got big bloody Twitter accounts, they can go out and run the polls for them and it isn't directly connected to the club. Yeah. So. So that's why I always end up second guessing them. Like, who's asking this? Is it Sean or is it David Sullivan? Who's yeah. asking this question? Um, so. Sean, Sean denies it, but I don't believe him. Right. Um, uh, next one. So Espen Bay says some fans say that they're not, they're not quite sure which side they're on on the Moyes debate because they're scared of the alternative of Moyes. I'd ask one simple question: Do you do you want to take a little chance in life or be bored to death? Seriously, how has Moyes, Moyes made people feel so dependent on him? I just can't wrap my head around this. I think that's a that's a good one. What do you reckon on that, Gio? Do you think there is a resounding fear? More so, I'm not happy, but I'm worried Nick, about what comes next. I've got a fear. I don't want to get a new contract at the minute. I'd like to see him move on in the summer. However, Asterix, I may change my mind if we win a Euro- if we win the Europa League, I may change my mind. Yeah. But I have a fear because. And this is why I didn't want him sat last season because the alternative was fucking Rafa Benitez. I did not want to see Rafa Benitez here at all. I'd rather you in charge of Rafa Benitez. Do you not? But, do you not? Think, do you not think they put those names up to, to for that reason? Because there's a there's a like Sean was bound in Sean was bound in that name yeah. about. Because I think they know how Rafa Benitez is looked on by the fans, and yeah. Sean will pump in Rafa Benitez. We we sacked Pellegrini and had to go back to David Moyes. Yeah, but we've got Tim Stanton now though. But will Sullivan let him pick a manager? I have no, I've got no confidence that he will be in no. charge of picking a new. None, none. And I, and me and you disagree about this, but I don't believe Stiden's responsible for bringing Alonso to leave accusing. Yep. It was Simon Rolfes who's Stiden's yeah. line I, manager for leave accusing. He was, he was, he was definitely involved in the process. He, he may have been, but yeah, Rolfes was the one that got him there, and Alonso was. Is friends with the CEO, who's I don't know who he is, some Spanish guy. And Alonso, yeah. knows Alonso could have went to Gladbach and didn't go because he was waiting for the right project. And then when he went, and Alonso spoken very publicly about him, how he and let's call him Simon Simon Rolfes have got the same ideology when it comes to football. Yeah, that's why he wanted to go to Leverkusen and work with him. Um, but my. I see no evidence as to why Sullivan would let Steiden bring in the new manager. I, I don't see it. And in January... Because it, because Sullivan's body of work shows that he needs someone to fucking do it for him. That's why. This, this, is, this is why I go back to the comment you just put up on the screen. I think a lot of people would expect that if Moyes goes, Sullivan's the one that brings in the new manager. And if that happens, do you, are you... Well, let me ask you this, Nick. Are you, if Sullivan... Say Stiden goes to Liverpool or he's just not allowed yeah. to have a say. If Sullivan was in charge of recruiting the new manager, would you be confident he gets it right? Uh, no, but it still wouldn't stop me from wanting Moyes out because I think, you, I, think you've, I, think, I think in life you face one problem at a time. As far as I'm concerned, this is a problem. 
Um, so that, that I get that, but I think that's your comment was a lot of people are are, are wanting Moyes to stay out of fear. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not confident Sullivan will get it right. No, of course no. I'm not. No. no, but but I think in January, what really concerned me about the Abraham Osman deal or no mm. Abraham Osman deal. First of all, there is the. The fact that Stoudin identified Sullivan, Sullivan, it seems like Sullivan overruled him. That's my interpretation of it anyway. Yeah. He failed to back Tim Stoudin. So I'm unhappy that's, about that's that in regards to... Blatantly what happened. Yeah. So I'm not happy about the fact that our sporting director who's brought in to bring in transfers was not allowed to bring in transfers. But even if you go one beyond that, and this is where my frustration... I'm almost annoyed about recruiting a new manager while we've still got one. And that is, Sullivan reminded us in January, he's top dog at West Ham. So mm. if he won't even let Steiden bring in an £80 million winger, is he really going to let Steiden bring in a manager? I just don't see it. I don't see it. If, if I knew Steiden was in charge and Noble was in charge as well, because Noble's still learning, but he's not stupid. Noble's aware of... Caduce and Alvarez. Noble's aware of good players and good managers. Yeah, but you're so, but you're but you're, you're talking you're talking about the possible scenarios as the um uh, you know when you look at the January window and you look at how ridiculous it was you know sort of weakening our squad as yeah, opposed yeah. to strengthening it when we're in a position of opportunity we can go and push on and, and kind of push for those top places because top teams are falling away you, you, those those opportunities don't come around very often you don't know what it's going to be like next season. Um, if they were planning on keeping David Moyes, then it just smacks of complete incompetence and a lack of ambition completely and utterly. It's completely incompetent if they're keeping David Moyes to have had that transfer window. It is ridiculous because I do think it's going to impact the second half of this season 100%. Yep. We're two, one, two or three injuries away from... Yep. is ridiculous. So I do think we, we almost need a miracle. We need to go through the rest of the season without any injuries at all. That's 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 what I think for us to get anything out of this season. So they've done nothing to help the man that they apparently back and wants to stay here achieve the most that he can achieve. That's why I don't believe it, Gio, because I'm choosing to believe that they are not as ridiculous as that. Because if that was the case, for instance, that would be reason enough for Tim Schneiden to go. But they didn't back Tim Schneiden. Yeah, yeah but, but what I'm let me get on to scenario two. This is scenario one is complete incompetence, right? So if this was, if that is what happened, if I was Mark Noble, I wouldn't want to be associated to it. I'd be like, no, this is ridiculous. I want out of there. If I was Tim, I'd be like, I can't be associated with this. This is ridiculous. Scenario two is what I said before the is, is before the January window opened. Um, now, look, we all get snippets of information. The, 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 the person that I spoke to said very clearly they will not spend in January. If they do, it will only be if they sell. And probably all you're going to see is a couple of loans. The plan is to replace Moyes. They're stringing him along and they're stockpiling money for the summer for a, for a new rebuild. This is what I've been told. Um, and that is what I'm choosing to believe, by the way, because not just because I'm desperate to believe it, because the alternative is utter incompetence, Geo. Is yeah. it not? Well, yes. First of all, I hope your source is not the one that told you Scamacca starting in the final. Oh, no, 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 it's not. It's not. <laughs> but no. incompetence is something David Sullivan's been riddled with at West Ham. Yeah. He has. He, it's, it's it's taken a while for him to sort of do it again. But has it? All we have to do is go back to two Januarys ago, when we were, I don't know, we were fourth, fifth, sixth in January. We ended up finishing seventh. The season that we finished seventh and got knocked out in the semi-finals by Frankfurt that season. Yeah, we did nothing in January. Now it's all hypotheticals, but there is an argument. That, I, we that, brought that, in, that was. That was the window where David Moyes came out and assumed full responsibility because he didn't want. He said he didn't want it was Alvarez from um, uh, U U Newman. Uh, so, so Alvarez, who's, who's yeah, at that one. I forgot about that one. Yes, so, so that one. He came out and sat down in front of the entire media and he blew smoke up Sullivan, Brady, and Gold's asses and said they wanted to buy money. There was money there, but I made these decisions. I couldn't find anyone that was going to make us any better. And then on the Diary of a CEO podcast, he was being offered players. He could have got Alvarez for forty million, but he said no. I've got Antonio. Yeah, but he did want Calvin Phillips, uh, funnily enough, <laughs> being, uh, Darren Nunez. There was players he wanted, we just couldn't get them. He just didn't want the yeah. players that we could get. And this is always the problem we've got when it comes to Moyes slash Sullivan and now Steiden in, involved and arguably Martin Noble involved as well, where the manager's not always going to want the players that the board want. And the board 
won't always want the players the manager wants, and the board can't get the players that the manager yeah. wants as well. So there's there's always fall downs when it comes to transfers. But I don't know if I was if I was the owner of a football club and we were sitting in touching distance of Champions League football and in the knockouts of the Europa League, I think I'd be ensuring I was getting in a player of substantial quality. Yeah. Bear in mind the year before that we'd brought in Jesse Lingard and we've seen the impact he had. Um but but I, I don't know. While Moyes does take full responsibility for it, there is an element of me that thinks, well, why have you allowed your manager to just accept nobody? I'd almost be saying, no, you're not having this. I don't want to see the board buying them players. But actually, I, I do kind of because I don't for a second believe David Moyes had heard yeah. of Ibrahim Osman before Stade and told him. If about you him if back. you was the, if you was the owner of the of the club in that instance, Sarah, and you can see what you're you. you Surely you would talk to your to your manager and go, yeah, "No, this yeah. is not good enough. You need you need numbers in. You need bodies." But yeah, you know? the six players pick one. You can have your pick, but one yeah. of these picks, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. for one of them. And if you don't pick, I'm picking for you. Yeah, um, and that's where Sullivan is to blame because he's quite happy. I won't spend money. You take the blame. <laughs> I'll, I'll... <laughs> buy your blanket again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right, next one. Oh, bloody hell! Uh, this is Paul Osborne. A new direction. He says. He says he lives in Somers- Somerset. Uh, and he's been to he hasn't been to a live game in over a year. Uh, he's got to realistically take two dos two days off work. He's got to pay for a hotel similar to you, Joe. Uh, you less charges, food, and a few beers and a ticket. So it costs me around two fifty to three hundred quid without counting any loss of wages to see a game. But with the entertainment value at zero, I came to the decision to stop going. It's even a hard watch on TV with the commitment the board has shown. We should be ninety five percent there. But we're a long way off. Moyes out. I suppose there's something you can resonate with. You know, not not the. You no, know, it's it is it's hard to justify, it, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's it's value. It's a value. Yeah. Minute. And if, listen, if you went knowing you were going to play good football, you don't know the results. You never know the results of the game. Right? You can you can have a guess. Certainly, well, I think most people going on Sunday will expect to see us get beat. Right? Yeah. You can guess what the results going to be. You can have an idea. Yeah probability of winning but what you can do sometimes if you're a Brighton fan I bet they go to games knowing they're going to play some decent football they yeah, don't know the result they know they're going to be yeah. there's going to be some alright yeah. football here there's there be I could be wrong and if I am I'm not that wrong I think he's won four of the last 17 Premier League games Brighton that is a horrific right. stat Brighton fans aren't arsed now first it's, of it's, all it's because of their injuries and because they know they trust the process well, first of all, it's it's expectation. Brighton being in top half is good for Brighton. And yeah. second of all, it's still decent football. They're still getting the entertainment yeah. factor there. They've been under Potter, who I'm not Potter's biggest fan. I find it, I find it quite bland. I find his football quite boring. Actually, it was a lot. Of, mm. It was all right on the eye at times. It was very. Deserby's like, Im- improved it. He's taken it. Yeah, hundred percent. He's taken it yeah. to another level. Yeah, yeah. But what? Paul, was it Paul? Sorry, Paul. Yes, yeah. What Paul and I may do is if you know you're guaranteed good football, that two hundred and fifty pound outlay, it's still expensive, but you might put up with it. You might justify it now. So you know what, yeah. might not win, but the footballs are. I'll see my mates have a couple of drinks, still have a, the crap search and fake pack down, but I'll get in the ground and I'll see some good football, and the value increases. Um, at the yeah, minute, because it because it, it's one thing when you do what Paul does and what you've done there. I mean, I know what I feel like, you know, after sitting through one of those typical games, you get towards the end of the second half, you just start to feel empty. You just yeah. like, this is just, you know, yeah. and it's such a horrible feeling and it should never, ever be like that. It shouldn't, you know, even, even if, like you said, even if you are getting beat, I mean, look, look with all due respect, the Man United game at the, at, the, at the weekend, the Man United game at the weekend, it was a better performance. It was better. It was easier on the eye. You couldn't... um you couldn't sort of uh, say it was a boring game. It wasn't a boring game. I think the people that went down there, you heard them. The ones that went to the game, when they came out the stadium, if you look at the fan cams on West Ham Fan TV, typically a lot of the players, was, were, a lot of the, the people were saying, oh, we, we were unlucky there. We were robbed, you know. Um, they 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 smashed and grabbed us. They basically West Hammed us, didn't they? That's what um, that's what Man United did. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, right. Let's move on to the next one, mate. One second. Uh, no, that's it. That's it. That was the last one. So very quickly, Gio, we're going to wrap this one up. Um, but before we do, we're going to have to give our verdicts on this as well. So I think, as I said before, you you, you can go first. Uh, first of all, what do you want to happen in terms of um, 
in terms of David Moyes' renewal. I know everyone's heard it before, but what do you want to happen? What do you what do you think is going to happen? Want wait till the end of the season. Do not make a decision. There's no reason to decide now. Um, he's going nowhere. Yep. We're going nowhere. We if come the end of the season, we want Moyes to sign a new deal. He'll sign a new deal. Um, there's there's no rush whatsoever. There's no benefit to rushing. There's none. All we potentially do. Listen, we either give him a new contract. There's two. There's two outcomes. Yeah. Either we have a good end to the season, and or it bad. looks like, and, and it looks like the right decision. Yeah. Or we have a bad one. It looks like a bad decision. So what's the risk in not giving him a new contract? Well, we have a good end to the season and he gets a new contract anyway. Yeah. Or we have a bad one and we say goodbye. There's no risk to not giving him a new deal, but there's risk nothing to give him a new contract. There's it's nothing at that. stake, right? I, said that before. So I know. <laughs> it's... Low, low risk, less risk, right? So you don't want to get to the... Can you imagine me and Sullivan? You give him a new it, contract it, now this, and finish this is why. Sorry, Joe, but this is why it, it makes me think it has to be Moyes pushing this because I don't think Sullivan would be desperate to give him a new contract before the end of the season. Why would Why would he? He wouldn't. Um, he wouldn't. I don't, I, think, I don't think he would. He's never done it before. No, I could make a couple of arguments just for, to play devil's advocate, but it'd be weak and it's clutching yeah. the squad, which is like Moyes' motivation and stuff. Well, arguably, he's still got motivation to get a new contract. So yeah. it'd be a weak argument. So I, I, I don't know. What do I think will happen? I think he gets a new contract, Nick. When? Not yet, but not at the end of the season. April, something like that. But late they're, March, they're, late waiting, March. they're waiting for the right moment, is what you're saying. Um, I think talks are ongoing. I think talks just take longer when because we just spoke about how there's no rush. Yeah, I think that relaxes the negotiations, and actually, it, it can take a few weeks if they need to. And. I think he'll get his contract at some point. Maybe, maybe they're waiting for us to see how we do that period you just spoke about, which is you know got four winnable fixtures after Arsenal. Yeah. Maybe they're waiting for that. Maybe they're waiting to see if we can get through the, the next round of European football and into the quarterfinals. Maybe that's enough for them. You yeah. just never know. Maybe at the start of the season, the board decided if you can get us into the quarterfinals of the Europa League and the top half of the Premier League, we'll give you a new contract. We don't know. That might be their their expectations. We, we don't know. I think he'll get a new contract. I don't know why. I just, even all these snippets we've had from Solomon, while they are a little breaking bit... Breaking my heart, Gio. Breaking my heart. They, while they are non-committal, they are mm. suggesting a contract will be offered to David Moyes. And Moyes seems confident and his brother seems confident he's going to get a new contract as well. Um, yep. I've been waiting for Kevin Nolan to speak, which he hasn't done yet. He's on TalkSport often, Kevin Nolan. Yeah. So I'm surprised he's not been asked or commented on this because his contract aligns with David Moyes. Moyes gets I, a new deal. He I, gets a new deal. I, I, I imagine there's a reason he hasn't spoken about it, though. He probably yeah. said, don't, don't ask me about this, for God's sake. I, I, I imagine that's what happens. <laughs> but now you've got me thinking, going, well, why would he say that? Because if the talks were ongoing, you'd be like, yeah, ask me. I'll sit here and say, oh, yeah, I'm in negotiation. I'm signing a new deal. Yeah. Saying, don't worry about it. I don't know. But I think... My prediction is you'll get a new contract, and it's based on David Sullivan. And how long we had him for now? 12, 13 years? So it's based on 13 years of David Sullivan. I think Moyes will get a new contract. Okay, fair enough. Um, well, I'm going to go counter to that. Um, I, th I don't think he will get a new contract. Well, uh, first of all, I don't want him to get a new contract. I don't. I'm not. I, I was in favour um, of, you know, last year, sacking him. You know, I was. Um, especially after Christmas last year, I think he should have gone. Um, I think what he should have done after the um, cup win, you know, where he repaired that damage, he could have gone out an absolute hero. Everyone would have thanked him. There would have been no issue at all. That's really going out at the top, especially when you consider the season that he just had, um, which um, the Premier League season. Uh, so for me, no, I think this only ends one way and it's going to win miserably for David Moyes. And it's just going to be a case of, it's going to be up, down, 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 up. Down, 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 and that's how it's going to be. It's going to be a a slow a slow drop off, especially when you look at. We're not going to get go out and manage to get a Paqueta every year. He's he's world class. You're not going to find players of that level every single window, and that's what David Moyes needs. I want to stop playing as a team, and I do. I've I've had enough. He's got to go. Uh, I'm sticking to um, yeah, could be wishful thinking, but I'm sticking to believing what um what the information that I've got uh and and. 
yeah, I, I do think now, especially once that January transfer window has played out, it does make sense. It's the only thing that can make sense. Like I said, if they give David Moyes his contract now, all it shows is complete incompetence from them <laughs> because of the transfer window that's just gone. It's mental. If they were all along going to give him a contract, if that was what they was going to do, and they haven't even backed him, they haven't even given him the tools to go on and achieve as much as he can achieve in a season where we was already six going into January is absolutely mad. I do think that basically they came out on TalkSport, Jim White, when Sullivan leaked to him, we're not renewing him at the end of the year. I reckon it all booted off. This is my this isn't what I've been told, by the way. That this is my what I'm I'm thinking. Conspiracy I'm making up in my own head. Um I think it all booted off because it was retracted quite aggressively in the two days that followed through Claret and Hugh, through Sean, through everyone else, saying this is not true, it's 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 it's, it's not accurate, even though we know it was a conversation between Sullivan and Jim White. Um, probably what's happened is they've they've pulled him in. Either David Moyes has kicked off, or maybe Tim Stein has gone. What are you doing? Why? Why? Why have you done that? It's ridiculous. We want to achieve as much as we can this year, um, and they've taken a blanket approach to backing him in the media. We back David Moyes. We want him to get a new contract. Stick to the plan, Sullivan. See him through to the end of the year. Shake his hand. Give him a golden handshake. Let him ride off into the sunset. New manager comes in. Stockpile of cash. Because they've balanced the books and they've got they've got um they've got money now because they didn't spend they made money in January they made money in the summer um and that's what I think will happen the new manager the other one the third scenario um which is one I came up with myself the only other thing that makes sense Geo when you look at the January transfer window is a club sale they're getting the book straight I, I think there's a fourth one go on Stadium leaves and Sullivan gives Moyes a new contract almost out of panic, fear, whatever. Yeah, no, I'm, but I'm, I'm talking about the reasoning now as to, as to what happened with that January transfer window. I, I don't... Um, club sale, well, I mean, well, the gold shares, shares are up for sale. We know that. Um, yeah. It's very public that there's yeah. a portion of the club there to buy. And Sullivan's always said, you can have the whole club if you're the right buyer. Um, mm. He makes on, as in, if you've got the right ambitions for West Ham. But what we we know what he means, which is if you're willing to pay the price, anyone can have it. The club is a bit of the club is very publicly up, for, literally up for sale. Yeah, all the club is also available to buy. Two different things, isn't it? Are available to buy up for sale. Two different things. So I think if somebody wants a bit of it, it's there. If someone wants all of it. I think it's there as well. Yeah, no, I, th I think so. I think the uh, the gold shares. Um, obviously, they had a they had a who, who did they get in to basically put the uh, put the shares out to market to maximise the value and basically I, get the value. I don't know. It's, oh, uh, it's, it's a very well known company, but I... but, but I think that's an exercise to basically try and obtain the value of of West Ham. I think that's what it was. Um, but look, we shall see. Um, I'm hoping it's option two or three. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, three would be good. Club sale. Yeah, that'd be good. nice. That'd be nice. That'd be different. Um, but yeah, so look, that's that's it from us anyway. Geo, thanks for uh, no sticking with us on this uh, on this long show. Um, uh, yeah, so we've we've run for it all. Like I said, all of the comments from um, from our post there's about 170 of them. They're going to be scrolling now for you. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like on it. Subscribe. Don't forget to go over to Hammers Chat as well. Um, and Geo, thank you very much. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Come on, you want.